We are going to also require you to understand the, sp the special segments in the coordinate plane using coordinate geometry. And we have um, five special segments that you will be responsible for. Okay, but uh, we can only write equations for four of them. Now I'm going to give you an example of each type of special segment and the steps that you will need to write the equation for those special segments. You need to memorize the steps um, so you can do it on your assessments and on your test Thursday. Oops. All right, so. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so for perpendicular bisector, we have done this segment um, already. We did it last six weeks. Um, so they were five steps that we had for the segment. You are going to be expected to still be able to write the equation for this special segment. Uh, just to recap our, our uh, steps, the first thing you need to do is find uh, the midpoint. And I'm going to abbreviate that midpoint. So you're going to have to do that first. Then second, you will have to find the slope. Hopefully I, we remember that. Third, I'll move this up a little bit. We will do the perpendicular slope. Fourth, we will use point slope. Form and four, uh, fifth, sorry. We will solve for y. Now, on, let me, point slope, form, okay. The thing I want to just remind you is if I don't ask or if the assessment or whatever uh, problem solving you're doing does not ask for the equation in slope intercept form or any type of form, it just says write the equation of the line, then if it just says write the equation of the line, then you can stop right here at uh, step four. But if it asks for a certain form in slope intercept form or if it asks in standard form, then you have another step that you're going to have to do. So. It says, it tells us up here that a perpendicular bisector goes through the midpoint and goes through the midpoint and is perpendicular to the side. So we have to um, make sure that we are addressing those parts in our coordinate geometry um, example and when we're graphing. Now it does not have to go to the opposite vertex and a lot of times they think perpendicular bisectors are like altitudes. The altitude has to go to the opposite vertex, but a perpendicular bisector does not. So, and I think we have it up here. Let me go back up here. We are going to graph uh, the triangle ABC, and we're going to use the coordinates that they give us here and go ahead and graph it on the graph. And you can use the graph to problem solve and to find your midpoint and your slopes, or you can use your formulas that we have for each. So first we need to go ahead and graph um, our point. So we got negative 4, one, negative 4, 1, and then we have 2, 7, and we have 8, negative 3. And I'm going to go and go ahead and label these. This is A, this is B, and this is C. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and connect them. So I'm going to draw a segment that I probably need to slide up a little bit. If it lets me. There we go. And then we want to draw another segment from C to B. If it let me. So, oops. Just messed up. Hold up. I'm not gonna get this right. Oh man. Is that negative four? One, two, three, four,
they want us to find the midpoint of AB. So on here, I can kind of physically see that, or I can look at my rise over run count up and over and do half of that. But I can physically see that that point is as such, which is at 1, or negative 1, excuse me, 4. Now, if I did not physically see it, I didn't see an exact point for that midpoint, I would have to use the formula, which tells me I'm just going to take the average of my x coordinate, so x1 and x2 divided by 2, and then y1 plus y2 divided by 2. So, but I can physically see that midpoint uh, for that side. And then they want us to find the slope of AB. So I could, if I wanted to, let me get me a different color here. I could count my rise over run. So I would have to go up six units and then to the right six units. So that would give me basically, sorry for the coloring, six over six, which can be simplified to just one. So my slope is one. But for a perpendicular bisector, we need to find the slope that is per the perpendicular slope. So that would make that a negative one, okay, the opposite reciprocal. So we're going to repeat for the other sides, basically do the same thing, um, and see if I can physically see the, the midpoint on the graph, or if I can't use the, um, the midpoint formula. So I'm just going to get into AC's midpoint is at 2, negative 1. And then the slope, lowercase or cursor slope, the, M, the slope of AC is a negative 4 over 12, which can be reduced to a negative 1 third. So now I need to find the perpendicular slope, which is the opposite reciprocal, which is 3. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Let me scroll down for the other side. So BC this midpoint is at 5, 2. BC's midpoint is at 5, 2. Then I want to find the slope of BC. The slope of BC, my rise over run, is a negative 10 over 6, which reduces to negative 5 over 3. But now I'm going to use the perpendicular slope which is three-fifths, okay? So just make sure we can find our midpoint and then our slope and then our perpendicular slope. Now, if I know those three points or those three key information, then I can use that to come up with my equation. So we're going to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector of the side AB. And it says here to go ahead and use the point-slope form and then change the equation into slope-intercept form. So if I do point-slope form, for my uh, perpendicular bisector of AB, I have to use the midpoint that we had, which was negative 1, 4, and I have to use the perpendicular slope, which we had was a negative 1. So we're going to plug it into the point slope form. That would give me y minus 4 equals a negative 1 parentheses x plus 1. And then we are going to distribute and solve for y. So I'm just going to distribute my slope, y minus 4 equals a negative x minus 1, and then if I add 4 to both sides, and we would get y equals a negative x plus 3. And there's my equation. Now, I'm going to graph the perpendicular bisector for every side so that I can find my circumcenter. Because the circumcenter is the point of concurrency for the intersection of those three lines. So when I, let me see what we got here. All right, so because I know my midpoint of AB, I can use the perpendicular slope. Perpendicular slope was a negative one, so basically I'm going down one to the right one. I want a negative slope. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. Down one to the right one. Okay, and we are going to see that that perpendicular bisector will eventually go through um, the triangle and it will not touch, it will not connect to the opposite vertex. Okay, so I'm going to, I wonder if I can do a different color. Okay, right. 
there is our perpendicular bisector for the side AB. So it's perpendicular and it goes through the midpoint. So I'm going to do the same thing for the side AC. I already have it to midpoint. I am going to go and use the perpendicular slope. The perpendicular slope was 3. So I'm going to use my rise over run. I'm going to count up 3. 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. 1, 2, 3 to the right 1. And I'm going to draw a line connecting those points so that I would have my perpendicular bisector. There we go. It goes to the midpoint. There. It's just the midpoint a little bit better there. All right. And then we're going to do the same thing for BC. Um, BC, we have its midpoint up there, and it had a three-fifths, a perpendicular slope of three-fifths. So from the midpoint, since the slope was three-fifths, I could go up three, one, two, three, to the right, five, or I can go down three, one, two, three and to the left five. Two, three, four, five. So my line would do such. And I can see now off that graph that that intersection is not an exact point, OK? Um, so one way I can check for that, check for that exact point is because we have three lines here, well, I know they're all intersecting, so I need to do what we've done in the past when I have equations or two or more equations, and that is elimination. So since I know one of the equations was, let's see, we had y equals negative x plus 3, I want to go ahead and find the equation for the second line or another line. So I'm going to use point slope. I'm going to use green for this set here. And that would give me, uh, when I plug it in, y minus 2 equals 3 fifths, parentheses x minus 5. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and distribute and solve for y. And that would give me y minus 2 equals 3 fifths x minus 3. And then if I add my 2 to both sides, I get y equals 3 fifths x minus 1. Now, now I'm going to look at these two equations. And to use elimination to uh, solve the system, because we're going to create a system, I need it to be in standard form. So I'm going to change this equation into standard form, basically putting the x and the y on the left side. And that would give me x plus y equals 3. To change this equation into standard form, I'm going to have to get rid of this fraction. And to get rid of the fraction, I'm going to multiply everything by, oops, by 5, by the denominator. And then I'm going to make sure that we list the x first and it's, and it's positive. So when I multiply everything by 5, I'll get a 3x, but I'm going to have to do the opposite. So basically, when I move the x over, it is a negative 3x. I want a positive 3x. So it's going to be 3x minus 5y equals a positive 5. Now that I have these equations, I can try to eliminate my x or my y term. Right now, nothing is going to be eliminated because they don't have the same coefficients or opposite coefficients. But I can eliminate the top or try to eliminate the type by multiplying everything by negative 3 so I can cancel out my x's. When I do that, that will give me a negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 9. Now I can add the 2, eliminate my x. This would give me a negative 8y is equal to negative 4. And then when I divide by a negative 8, 
we get y equals 1 half. So that is my y coordinate. To get my x coordinate, I'm going to plug it back in. I can plug it back into my original equation that I had here. And I can solve for x. When I do that, I would get 5 halves and my y was 1 half. And that would be my point of intersection for the three bisectors, uh, perpendicular bisectors, which is my coordinate for my circumcenter. So I know that's kind of lengthy, but you are going to be expected to write the equation of the perpendicular bisector, come up with the location, the coordinate of the circumcenter. If you do not get an exact point on the coordinate, like if it doesn't actually fit on that coordinate, then you're going to have to use system of equations to find uh, x and y. The next video we will be going over how to find the median and there are steps for that as well.